So we had one announcement, one person got ill, unfortunately, Jack Walworth, who was here in 93 when we had the Mingus, big Mingus Festival. And he at last minute got uh, ill and could not make this trip. He looked forward to it. So standing in is Walter White on trumpet. Okay, he's a good man. So we want you to know this is the last uh, stop on the Mingus uh, cent Centennial Tour. Um, they've done Phoenix, they did uh, uh, the Net Nation in Phoenix, they did the Century Room in, in uh, Tucson last night, and now this is the final uh, concert of their tour. And Ken, I, I just want to mention that I didn't talk to Jack. I did speak with Jack Walrath this morning, and Great. he sends his regards and his loves, and uh, was uh, re reminiscing about being here almost 30 years ago, so he, he says hello and sends his best and says sorry he couldn't be here. And uh, that's about it. All right. So there aren't many people left on the planet that played with Charles Mingus. And Jack Walworth was one of those. Okay. And so is Charles McPherson. Okay. And I have to have him here as a special guest today. So um, Jack, you're in from Detroit, right? Charles. Charles is from Detroit. I'm, 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 I'm from Austin, Detroit, and I live in Michigan now as well. Oh, oh okay. Got, got the story a little mixed up. <laughs> anyway, so uh, you put your hands together, okay, and let's bring on Dominguez Dynasty, okay?
Thank you. Thank you very much. That was uh, our version of Times Square in New York City circa 1952. That was Might have been a little old. bit more dangerous back then. A little more crazy. It's a little safer now. A little too safe. There's the Donna Karen and uh, ice cream shops, you know, uh, Target and the movie theaters. Yeah, back in the old days, it was a little more dangerous. Anyway, um, you heard from Mr. Walter White on the trumpet. How about a hand for Mr. Walter White on the trumpet? La trompeta. Oh, yeah, but I'm just putting a masculine spin on it because you're a masculine kind of guy. You did? You did! So, uh, you also heard from Mr. Theo Hill on the piano forte. You heard from Mr. Andy McKee over there on the, uh, the bass. Dr. Profundo. And holding down the drum chair, which you'll hear from, you know, you're going to hear from the whole set, but you're going to be really letting loose later on. How about a hand for Mr. Chris Beck on the drums? And he's here already, so how about a hand for Mr. Charles McPherson, our very special guest. Woo! Yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Oh, yes. Uh, we're going to play for you a piece of music which, uh, well, I think I'll let Andy uh, tell you about, uh, about this piece of music. There's a microphone right there. See, he can tell you about this next piece of music we're going to play. All right, such a pleasure to be here in Nogales. Thank you for having us, especially for this entire Mingus event and the centennial of his birth. That's uh, for all of us a really special trip to Nagares, and it's a really real pleasure to be here. Thank you for having us. <laughs> this next composition, Mingus wrote a, a, a lot of his compositions were inspired by individuals or by events, um, politically, uh, social events at the time or individuals that he wrote many compositions for. This one is a, a kind of fun piece. Um, it's inspired by a visit he made to the, the estate of uh, Peggy Hitchcock, upstate New York. And um, he was there with Peggy Hitchcock and Timothy Leary and some folks of that generation, that era. And um, they were having, they were experimenting, let's say, a bit, and having some fun. And, uh, in, in Peggy, Peggy Hitchcock's estate there, there was a, a room with a skylight. And the skylight was made from the, the glass cover of a of a, a fighter jet cockpit. A glass cover and it was blue. So this is makes this competition called Peggy's Blue Skylight. Simple enough. Uh, uh, uh.
I'm going to have one more time for Mr. Charles McPherson on the alto saxophone. Peggy Blue Skylight. Yeah. And how about I have Mr. Keel Hill one more time on the piano forte. All right. And we're going to move right into our next piece, which is uh, Fables of Fathers. So I think uh, maybe Charles. You want to tell us something about this bad boy? Yeah, this tune here uh, is a tune that uh, Mingus wrote. And uh, as I've said many times before, Mingus was a multi-dimensional composer. He had many moving parts uh, as a personality, um, and he had deep feelings about many things. So he wrote compositions about love, um, he wrote um, another kind of love, reverence and love of God or deity or relatives, agape. Uh, so he wrote from there and he also wrote from protest. He was um, socially involved, he was um, a world thinker, he thought deeply about many things. And uh, when I joined Mingus, it was the early 60s and uh, New York City as well as the whole world was um, pretty much in flux, a lot of things going on, Vietnam War, uh, civil rights and voting rights. Hippie love. Uh, and um, <laughs> also kind of a social revolution as well. So a lot of things going on during the 60s. And um, cons uh, so Mingus wrote a song for a Southern governor who was a staunch segregationist. His name was Fabas. And uh, so his claim to his 15 minutes of, of fame uh, is represented by him standing in front of a little grade school disallowing a bunch of little girls to go in. That was his 15 minutes. So um, Mace wrote this tune in protest. He also wrote lyrics that you can hear some of us sang up here. And this is entitled Fables of Fabus. <laughs>
Fathers, there you go. See, see what happens when you act bad. Somebody notices and writes a song about it. Pretty soon, you're famous for all eternity. All right. So, yeah, Orville Redenbacher is definitely better with butter. So, uh, we'd like to continue on now and play uh, what we, what I like to call one of Mingus's most beautiful melodies. This is called. His tribute, one of his tributes to Duke Ellington. This is called Duke Ellington's Sound of Love. Not a song. 
song had found my soul lost in blues, jazz, and black time. No song had got to my home. I was searching for my melody.
celebrating Charles Mingus' 100th birthday with us. How about we all show up for the next 100th birthday? Yeah. That should be possible in about 30 years if we can hang on. Um, let's see. We're going to do one more for you. This is called Better Get a Hit in Your Soul. Right and, on your face. And, you, and you know what I've been talking about.
Thank you. I'm on behalf of the Mingus Dynasty, Mr. Walter White on the trumpet, Theo Hill on the piano, Andy McKee on the bass, Chris Beck on the drums, and our special guest, very, very special guest, Mr. Charles McPherson. Thank you so much. My name is Craig Handy. This is the Mingus Dynasty. Thank you. Thank you, Charles Mingus. We love you guys. We'll see you next time. And that concludes the Mingus Festival here in Nogales. Okay. I want to thank you. How My name is Eddie Rodriguez, producer and host of the Connecticut Culture Show. I was glad to bring this to you. Give it up. Thanks Come for on. inviting me. Mr. Glendon Gross, Trumpet Clay, who oh, played yes. with, the other, with the other group, the Alan Wine x -Tech. Indeed. Thank you for bringing me down. Oh, and don't down. forget, we're going to do this on so, the 30th, yeah. International yeah. Jazz Day in Tubac. In Tubac. Tubac. Okay, yeah. what's, the, what's the time schedule for that? I don't have the schedule yet, but I believe it'll be in the early afternoon. Okay. And there's going to be, Christy Hines is going to be playing. She's from, coming all the way from New Mexico. Ana Maria Romante will be there. She'll be there to sing along we'll with there. the other yeah. one. Next week. Yeah. So stay tuned. Make sure to come back. And that's on the 30th. And we'll see you then. Take care.